So moving on to this particular soil type that we're talking about today, we're going to be looking at a, a reg, the, the regasolic order. And so the, the primary characteristic or the central concept of the regasolic soil order is that it's a weakly developed soil. It's, a, it's sort of a junior soil or a soil that's just, just getting started. And so it's characterized, unlike some of the other soils that we, we, we've seen in the classification system, the characteristics of the regasolic order is actually a lack of significant soil horizon development or the lack of a, a, of a, a B horizon that's at least five centimeters thick. And so uh, when we think about a weakly developed soil, um, there are various different uh, there are various different factors that we might consider in terms of what makes a soil weakly developed. And so some of the things that this could include would be the, the age of the soil, so a relatively young soil. So when we talk about parent material, uh, initially when the glaciers deposited all of the parent material across the landscape, uh, everything that that's there, just raw parent material waiting to develop specific soil horizons, those would be considered uh, of the regasolic order. Now there can be a bit of soil development taking place within that, but generally those youthful soils would be considered regasolic. Other uh, youthful, uh, youthfulness, uh, instability would be another factor that could contribute to a reg the regasolic soils. So where you've got some sort of disturbance that's, that's not allowing soils to develop all of their characteristics. So in this particular uh, landscape, one of the, the factors of instability would actually be uh, cultivations. That's one of the things that can disturb the, 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 soil for the natural soil forming uh, processes. The nature of the parent material can be another factor that contributes to re the regasolic order. Uh, if you've got a, uh, in the Great Sand Hills, for example, the, that, uh, the quartz sand material, it doesn't weather very easily and so it's hard for, for soil horizons to develop in that type of material. And also the climate, so a really dry, cold, dry and or cold climate can inhibit a lot of the processes that we've been talking about in this course that contribute to the development of the horizons. So within the, the regasolic order, typically when we, we've been, as we've been moving through the material, we've been talking about the soil forming processes. So that's where Simonson characterized them as additions, removals, transfers, and uh, translocation, or tr transformations and translocations, basically. And so in terms of the dominant soil forming processes in this landscape, they're a little bit, uh, well, basically, because they're weakly developed, these are those these are soils that don't have a whole lot of processes going on. Some of the major uh, some of the major processes are actually additions or removals of material itself. So, in the case of uh, in the case of a soil that's character a regasolic soil that's characterized by the effects of erosion, where any soil that does develop is basically eroded away, then the process we'd be looking at is it actually a loss of of soil from that that site. You might see in a, a situation like this where we still we have some grassland vegetation that we still have some organic matter being added by the roots and root exudates of the grasses that are that, that are that are present, and so that can contribute to uh, melanization or the development of your A horizons. And otherwise, there's in this particular soil, uh, there's going to be there's minimal translocation or transfer of materials within the horizon, and part of that is that. This soil, in addition to being characterized by disturbance associated with cultivation, if we, if we look around, we're actually on one of the highest points in the landscape here. So it's one of the things that we can take into consideration when we're trying to evaluate why this soil has formed at this particular location in the landscape. And so from that, we can start to think a little bit about the soil forming factors that are influencing this. So remember that we talk about processes as being the, the, the actual uh, physical and chemical things that are taking place to develop the horizons within the profile. But then the factors themselves can influence the intensity, the rate and intensity with which those, those processes take place. And so in terms of the soil forming factors, uh, the, the major one that we're going to uh, focus on here is actually topography. And so like I said, this is a little bit more rolling than you might think of automatically in terms of the, the level prairies. But just even these very slight changes in topography, as we've seen with this soil compared to other soils we've looked at at this site, uh, the, just being on this slightly higher location within the landscape, 
it makes it so that this particular location, the water sheds away from this. So any rainfall that comes as precipitation, even when the snow falls on, on this landscape, uh, it tends to get blown away uh, by the wind and deposited in those lower lying positions where we have the aspen and willow and so on. It collects in those low lying positions. In the spring, the runoff, uh, when the snow, the, the snow that is present melts, tends to run off from this position very quickly while the ground is still frozen. So these tend to be consistently very dry, exposed positions within the landscape. And so the, the, the relief or the topography of this particular location is uh, automatically influencing some of the other, uh, the other soil forming factors that we've talked about, namely the climate. So making that slightly warmer, drier microclimate within the landscape. So that influences the rate at which the organ organisms might uh, operate within this landscape and even the presence of them. It tends to be a little bit too dry to be optimal habitat for the microorganisms that tend to mediate a lot of the other processes that we that we talk about. And so of course one of the other important factors within this then is uh, we'll remember that that seventh factor is actually the, the human factor. So human erosion via cultivation. And so when we look at this particular landscape uh, like I said, it was cultivated pretty consistently uh, from the time of settlement in this area and including it was continually cultivated through even once this was taken over by the national as it became part of the National Wildlife Area. It was cultivated as well for about 40 years until it was seeded back to grass just about four years ago. And so that human factor in this particular landscape, given where we are, that the, 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 the uh, upper landscape position, which we would also refer to as a shoulder or a knoll within the landscape, uh, it's quite susceptible to tillage erosion. So when in these hummocky landscapes, if you're ever driving past a field and you look at uh, in, in this type of rolling topography, if you're paying attention in the spring when there's no crop standing there, you might notice that the upper positions of the landscapes are a little bit lighter than the lower positions of the landscapes. Part of that is moisture, and part of that is that the parent material itself is nearer to the surface, and parent material tends to be a little bit lighter in color, particularly in the prairies of Saskatchewan, than, uh, than the surface topsoil itself. And so in these landscapes, tillage erosion, so the, the actual translocation of, of soil from the upper landscape positions and deposi subsequent deposition in the lower landscape positions can be a really significant soil forming factor. And so where this soil might have had a greater opportunity for development in a different, uh, um, under a different management, given that it had a long history of cultivation, it's going to uh, be a, a significant factor in terms of the types or the, the limited, I guess in this case, the limited extent of horizon development that we see.